Hello and welcome to today's episode of Duel Manjaro. My name is Jim German and today we're going to be taking a look at the Cobalt Pneumatic Impact Wrench. This is the model LGA2460. It's a half inch drive impact wrench and it's rated for 500 foot pounds of torque. That's what we're going to be taking a look at today. We're going to be seeing if this actually can put out 500 foot pounds of torque. Um, I've read some of the reviews and I've had some problems where I couldn't get this impact wrench to take off uh, a lug nut off a car which should probably only be about 100 foot-pounds. So I wanted to measure it and see how much uh, torque it actually puts out. So how are we going to measure that torque? Well, the way torque is typically measured is with a torque wrench. However, a torque wrench measures the torque of, that you put on a bolt as you're tightening it down. So rather than just measure the impact wrench directly, what we're going to do is we're going to tighten a bolt. In this case, it's a big one-inch bolt. We're going to tighten that up to a known value of torque and then use the impact wrench to undo that bolt. So there is a slight difference between the amount of torque that's required to tighten a bolt and the amount of torque that's required to untighten a bolt. That's due to the difference between the static and sliding coefficient of friction between the bolt and the threads and the bolt and the washer and the plate. However, we can measure that using the torque wrench and see what that is, and it should be constant throughout the range of torque. So in this case, uh, with this bolt and this nut, it's about 10%. So that means if we torque this bolt down to 100 foot-pounds, it's going to take about 110 foot-pounds to get it off. It's probably not super precise. It probably varies a little bit depending on where the bolts turn and stuff, but for our uses, it should be good enough. So the next problem we have here is that this torque wrench only goes up to 150 foot-pounds. The gun is rated for 500 foot-pounds. So what are we going to do about that? Well, I could buy a torque wrench that's good for more than 500 foot-pounds. However, those torque wrenches need a three quarter inch drive. These are all half inch drive and they get quite expensive. So instead what we did is I built my own torque wrench. So I've got here is a one inch thick piece of steel on the end of a long two by four. That happens to fit nicely in a one inch drive socket. So I put that on. Then at the end of the two by four, which you can't see there, I can put a force meter and see how much force is put on. Since I know the length of the 2x4 and I know how much force is put on the end of it, I can effectively figure out how much torque is applied. So we'll use this and then at, this, at the end of this long 2x4 I only have to put on about 70 pounds to get 500 foot-pounds at the bolt. Now to keep that bolt in place, on the table here I've got a one and a half inch wrench and it's clamped down to the table. Hopefully these clamps are, are tight enough and far enough apart that they won't slide around when I'm trying to torque it down. If not, I'll have to bolt it down a little bit further onto the table. So we just take our, our bolt that's already a little bit tight on here, drop it in here, and we get our socket, put it on top, and we'll torque it down. So here's my makeshift torque wrench. Here's my makeshift torque wrench. I've got a board, happens to be 79 inches long, at the end of it, I got this little clamp that I hook this force meter up to. When I pull the force meter, then however much force it is, I can multiply that times 79 inches, convert it to foot pounds, and that's the amount of torque that I've got applied here. For the first go around, I'm going to do 200 foot pounds, and that works to up to 30 pounds down here. There we go. All right, so we've got that torqued up. We've got that torqued to 200 foot-pounds just to start to see how this gun works. Let's take that off. That off to the side. Put on our safety glasses. Whenever you're using air tools, it's always a good idea to be wearing safety glasses. We're going to have this set to its max setting of three. And we'll fire it up and see how it does. All right, you can see that. Well, at 200 foot-pounds, gun has no problem taking it off. So next step, we'll tighten it down up to about 350 foot-pounds and see if it can take it off then. Now I've got this torqued up to 350 foot-pounds. So full disclosure, I've got the gun uh, running on 120 PSI of air. It's only rated at 90 PSI. Um, but I've got it running on a 3 8 inch airline, and I've got a couple of uh, quick disconnects here that should be cutting the air down a little bit. So I wanted to give it a little bit, every bit of advantage. So let's fire it up, see if it can take it off at 350 foot pounds. All right, so you can see it struggled a little, little bit, but it was still able to do it. I 
I torqued the bolt up to 460 foot-pounds, so that means it should take about 500 foot-pounds to take the bolt off. So let's see if it can do that. That should be what it's rated for, so it should be able to do this, particularly as I've got it running at a little higher pressure. All right, you can see it struggled quite a bit with that. It was able to do it though. So I think we're gonna stop there and we'll say that it does make the 500 foot-pounds that it's rated at if you turn up the pressure a little bit. I don't think that it'd be able to take a bolt off that was torqued to much higher than that looking at how much it struggled to get that off. I've got the gun apart right now. I just wanna take a look at how big the hammers are on it, how much they weigh, and also how big the air motor is on it. There's been some questions floating around lately about how much torque some other guns put out. So I just want to take a look at how this compares to some of those other guns that other people have done reviews on. So we take the, the front cover off, then we take the hammer and anvil section out. And now we should be able to tap out the pins that hold this together. And of course this is all covered with grease. It's interesting, this is a, a fairly thick grease. Um, You'd probably want a little bit of a lighter grease. It would probably hit a little bit harder. It may just be this This is a little bit old in here. Let's see. Put that out. So these are actually the hammers here that spin around and hit on the, um, the anvil here, and that actually provides the torque that you've got. So there's two of them. That's pretty typical design. Let's see, we got our handy dandy scale out here. Now my hands are all covered with grease. Turn that on. Put my hands off a little bit. Let's see. So together these weigh 210 grams. Uh, I think they were looking at them individually. Um, so that'd be about 100 and let's say 107 grams per hammer on this cobalt gun, which is rated for 500 foot pounds. The snap-on gun that somebody was looking at was rated for 600 foot-pounds and it had hammers that were 120 grams. Makes sense, they're a little bit more. The Harbor Freight gun though was rated for 1100 foot-pounds and it had hammers that were only 100 grams each. So that Harbor Freight one sounds a little fishy but seems right in line with that, the, the snap-on one there. Next I want to take a look at the size of the air motor. That's going to also be play a big role in how much torque this gun puts out. So we got this end plate put on that has a nice big bearing on it. Inside is the air motor, these little veins pop out and spin here as the air blows through. You can see this is offset, that's to give it some more torque uh, in reverse than in forward. Probably always want more torque to be able to take a bolt off than to put it on. So we'll take out our little calipers here. Let's see if we can measure the depth. It's 1.5 inches. And the diameter a little bit harder. 1.8 inches. So that actually works out to be um, right about the same size as the gun from Harbor Freight, which is uh, a little bit smaller than the gun from Snap-on. The gun from Snap-on was 1.75 inch diameter, 1.84 inches length. Um, so it's about 20% less, maybe 15% less uh, volume than the Snap-on gun, but it's about the same as the Harbor Freight gun, which Makes me think that that Harbor Freight gun is probably a little overrated if it's got the same size air motor as this gun, which is only good for 500 foot-pounds. Surprisingly, this torque wrench actually could put out the 500 foot-pounds of torque that it was rated for. Um, I'm surprised because I've had some trouble in the past with it not being able to get bolts undone. However, probably what was going on is I was either using a deep socket like this, which adds a lot of extra material that that wave of impact has to travel down, and that saps some of the torque that it can put out. I may have even been using an adapter like this which adds even more material and allows it to wobble around a little bit, which saps even more of the torque. I hope you liked this video, and thanks for watching.